A little bit ago, we unboxed the Artec EVA and the Artec Ray. And while they are both incredibly capable 3D scanners, they barely scratch the surface as to what's available in the 3D scanning market. But for us to start talking about all of this, we have to step back a little bit into the basics of what is 3D scanning and the types of scanners that exist. Let's get into it. Welcome back, and on the table in front of me, I have almost $100,000 worth of equipment. I'm gonna try not to push it off the table accidentally. I'm not Linus Sebastian, of course. But what we've got are a few different scanners here. But let's talk about the types of 3D scanners first, then we'll go into which ones these are. There are a few main types of 3D scanners out there. Among them include laser triangulation, structured light, photogrammetry, contact-based, and LiDAR, which is more specific around the laser pulse style of 3D scanning. Now, I'm sure there are others that exist in the fringe of each of those categories, but those are your main five categories of 3D scanners. In front of us here, we have a couple different. Starting with laser triangulation, it has two lasers that point at an object and a camera that also points at the object and uses fancy triangulation to figure out where those lasers are hitting with that camera. This is very common in blue light scanners, in scanners that you'll see a laser going down and up across a part. That's not technically laser triangulation, but it is working in the same way. It's looking how the laser lines interact with the subject that they're touching. And with triangulation, you're able to see it a little bit cleaner. The only issue with laser triangulation is that the lasers and camera need to be fixed. They cannot move. That distance between them is incredibly specific, and if it moves even a little bit, you can completely ruin the accuracy of the scan. When you look at high-end, very, very, very fine detail scanners, this is normally how they're being used because well, lasers are what they are. You can get incredibly fine lines out of a laser and structured light is just not going to get the grid that you need. And LiDAR is just not going to get that quality at that distance, at least from my understanding. Laser triangulation is used for things like jewelry scanning. We've also seen it used for doing things like replication of firearms and parts where you're utilizing incredibly small components that need to be stupid accurate. But this also begs the question of Grant, why wouldn't you just freaking measure it with calipers? Things like rings and other very, very fine detail objects would take forever to measure with calipers the traditional way. These laser triangulation scanners are not all that expensive if you wanted to build one yourself. But if you wanted something with very, very high accuracy, yeah, you're gonna be dishing out more money. When you look at high-end 3D scanners, you're looking at at least 20 grand to start, and then you're going up from there. Companies like Surfacer and Steinbeckler make incredibly high-end laser scanners that are able to do this kind of thing, but you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not multi hundreds of thousands of dollars to make that work. When microns count, there are scanners out there that are capable of down to five micron or less accuracy. To give you an idea of how accurate that is, your 3D printer is printing at 200 micron layers. So imagine detail capable of 1 40th of the thickness of your layer on your average FDM 3D printer. Yeah, that's insane. And 1 10th that of the detail capable on a resin 3D printer in the Z-axis. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous when you look at these high-end scanners, but they're very specialized and come with high price tags to boot. Next up is structured light. This is what the EVA is. Structured light involves a LED array that is projecting light onto an object. This array will have an actual pattern on it. If we zoom in on the actual LEDs here, you'll see that there are crosshatches on them. That crosshatch creates a pattern as they project out. As far as I can tell, it's not individual LEDs that do this. There's actual copper bars that go across on the EVA itself. But then it utilizes 
three separate cameras for not only triangulation here with these two, but also color detail with the middle camera. So that as you're close or far away from an object, you're able to not only detect that, but also catch the coloring of the object itself. The big issue with structured light scanners is that they can't scan glass and they have a really hard time scanning black objects because the black will absorb a lot of that light and not bounce it back to where the cameras and sensors can see it. It's kind of a problem. The way we've gotten around it is actually kind of cool. There's a really expensive way in the proper way and then there's the way that everybody basically uses. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on how to properly 3D scan things. I, we want to talk more about 3D scanning topics here on the channel. We might end up breaking away to a completely separate channel for the 3D scanning content. We'll figure it out. But structured light is great because the scanners themselves are very lightweight, and at least in terms of the EVA, the only moving part is a cooling fan. This thing is effectively impossible to break. Their optics are hard mounted, the lights are LEDs, so there's no filament that you're worried about getting destroyed. To me, again, the only downside is these cables. I've always wondered what the ports were for on the bottom of an EVA. We've got some ports down here. They look like they're RJ45, otherwise known as Ethernet ports. Apparently, you can put a bunch of EVAs together in an array and create a bullet time 3D scanner system. And let's be real here. If the EVA is good enough to scan Barack Obama, yes, the Artec EVA is responsible for that 3D model of Barack Obama that most people have seen, some have printed. Well, then it's good enough for government work quite literally. It does have some downsides, right? The fact that a lot of these structured light scanners require a direct computer connection makes them absolutely bulky. And the larger ones pull so much data that they need a powerhouse of a computer to run it. We utilize currently, as of filming this video, a 3750H Ryzen processor and a GTX 1650. It's an older computer, but it checks out. It is capable of running the EVA at about a max of 14 frames a second, and we see it slowly die down to about 10 to 11 once we've had it uh, on there for a while. But the EVA is only capable of doing 16 frames a second, so a, what, three or four year old computer is capable of still doing it at 80% of its max speed, that's great. Arctic also recently came out with the Leo and now the recent Leo upgrade, which is fully internal. It does not need any external connection, which is also a structured light scanner and capable of 80 frames a second. It is quite a bit heavier than this, so I actually do prefer the Eva myself. And it's also about 10 grand more expensive, you know, because reasons. But it still works really, really well. Um, my preference is the EVA. The bad back means if I can keep my weight in my hand down quite a bit, I'm happy. And a long USB cable generally covers most of what we would need to set the laptop down somewhere and do the scan. It works. And we are working on a fully portable 3D printing rig. We're actually looking for title sponsors. So if you or someone you know would like to sponsor that entire build series, please let me know. You can reach out to us at YouTube at 3D Musketeers. Com. And if you want to be able to help us out here on the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers, where even a dollar a month helps us to create better content for you guys every single week. We want to do a field trip with these scanners and actually go out and scan some objects, whether they're vehicles, their buildings. Patreon will let us know where we're going to go. And I like this because we're going to end up releasing that data for Patreon. And I'm thinking of doing some crash cars first because I would love to have some more crash cars as models. But I also think some of you are working on some post-apocalyptic tabletop game models. Maybe you're like my buddy Fred and love to do dioramas. Crash cars are great for that kind of thing. And well, there aren't a lot of good models out there. We're going to go ahead and produce them. So if you guys want to help us out, you can do so over at Patreon. But enough of this. Let's get back to talking about the scanners. We move next into the type of 3D scanning that has existed for decades. And you, yes, you actually have the technology right on you, probably within reach. Photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is effectively taking an absolute metric shit ton of photos, which is 2,200 pounds of shit for those wondering, around an object itself. And the more photos you take, the better quality of rendering that you can get. Programs like Reality Capture, as well as others out there, enable you to use something like a generic cell phone or even a DSLR camera to walk around an object and just snap photos like they're going out of style. That then can be translated into a 3D model by looking at how those pictures interact with each other. It's actually a very simple process. 
except the software side of it is really complicated and even further the computational requirements are quite high. We've seen this before. I've actually seen large photogrammetry arrays, but they're kind of ridiculous. The ones that use hundreds of DSLR cameras to take a photo all at once so you can capture movement, it's easier to scan animals, but you don't have to have a bunch of cameras. You can literally use your cell phone and take photos or even video around an object itself. There are a few apps out there that enable this too, but I think it's a great technology that utilizes the amazing cameras that most of us carry in our pockets every single day. But that doesn't mean that they're the easiest things to use. Sometimes they can be finicky for calibration. And a lot of times while the models might look pretty, the actual voxel count and how accurate all of that is might not be that high. So if you're looking for an asset to use in a video game, you're probably fine by using photogrammetry. But if you're looking to do some sort of forensic style engineering, you're gonna need something more like this. Unless of course you're using calibrated cameras and all of that, but uh, that's one of those fringe cases. Next, we have contact base. Contact base is literally booping things, right? Faro is one of the most popular companies for this with a Faro arm that has a ruby tipped touch probe on it that you're able to boop onto things that will give you accurate knowledge of where everything is. The arm itself for a Faro arm knows exactly where it is at all times. So when you're going around touching objects, it's able to basically create a 3D point cloud that you can then convert into a mesh. The nice thing about the touch point scanners is that they are much easier generally to convert into surfaces in solids, otherwise known as parametric models, than something like these two would be. These are gonna produce objects that are better suited for mesh lab, mesh mixer, ZBrush, Blender, whereas a touch point scanner is going to be way more accurate for doing things like surfaces and solids. Because ultimately accuracy matters and touch point scanners get it dead nuts on. And they come with calibration certification, similar to this one has a calibration certification, as does the EVA. These two do not. The Faro arms are expensive though, and they're generally set to be something that is never moved. They have to be on a very flat and rigid surface. We've used them a couple of times to scan car parts. It's incredibly valuable to do something like that, especially when you have long, flat, and slightly curved surfaces. Touch point scanning is perfect for that kind of thing. The one rough thing about touch point scanners is your resolution is based on how many points you create. And scanners like this are producing multiple points per millimeter, whereas a touch point scanner is not really able to do that. So while your accuracy might be high, your point to point accuracy, especially if there's a curved surface, might not be as good as you're looking for. When you're looking to do measurements for validation, you really can't beat a touch point scanner. They work well, they don't take up a lot of space because of course they can be stored relatively vertically and you're going to find them in basically every machine shop. The structure scanner from Occipital, this is the Gen 1, I think they're now up to like a Gen 2 or a Gen 3, is basically an Xbox Connect. It's the same basic hardware and the 3D System Sense Scanner is the same thing as this, just with a handle on it. It's a bit of a mix between photogrammetry and structured light, but instead of physical light that you can see, it's infrared light, and it uses an infrared camera right here to be able to detect that. Let me show you guys what that looks like, because this whole thing is run off an iPad, and that means I don't need a bunch of separate computers. So what we're looking at, we're actually looking at the set with this right now, and you can actually see the scanner, you can see my hand, and this is just on the depth sensor. So the further we take the scanner away, the different colors that we get. And then we can go depth and color. This will show you what the actual physical camera sees alongside. So this is effectively your photogrammetry as well as your infrared structured light. Is it good enough for what most people need 3D scanning for? Absolutely. freaking lootly It's perfect for what most people need it for. And that's why I like these scanners and they're dirt cheap. I think the new one is something like 600 bucks. We'll link to it in the description. When you need to scan something quick, you're not gonna beat this. Yes, I could take my EVA, I could plug it in, do all the fancy things, set it up, and then go through and scan the object. That takes a minute. I can just grab out the iPad and here, you wanna see Grant from quite a few years ago? This is me. We can see the scan was taken December of 2015. So, um, quite a few years ago, and this was taken with this exact iPad and scanner system. It actually looks pretty darn good with the color on it. As soon as we remove 
that texture, you can see that we've lost a lot of resolution. And the big thing with the style of scanners is that you want to make sure that you have good consistent light. Without that, you're gonna have a couple of problems. And last but not least is LiDAR. LiDAR is the Artec Ray, as well as your basic iPhones. The brand new iPhone 12 and 13 both have LiDAR on them. And I believe on the 12, it was only on the big boy. And on the 13, now it's on even the lower model, as well as a better sensor on the Pro Max. Hilariously, this is almost 38 iPhone 13 Pro Max 1 terabyte editions. This is a $60,000 scanner. And yes, it is worth every penny because if you've seen images and scans off of an iPhone, you'll know. Again, with the texture, you won't really know the difference. It looks great to the average person. When you're looking at it for more than just its texture, something like this comes into play a lot better. LiDAR sends out a pulse, a laser beam pulse. And then as it comes back, it measures that time. With this scanner, we have a piece that moves here as well as the entire system rotating. And you can see that there is a lens in here. Back on one of the two sides, I forget which side it's on, is the actual laser itself. And it goes through mirrors and lenses to get shot out. And then it measures the time it takes to come back. That will then give you an incredibly accurate point cloud as well with these cameras and actual textural detail of what is being scanned. Most LiDAR scanners are capable of doing quite a long distance where something like this is only up to maybe 800 millimeters, maybe a meter if you're lucky. The Ray is capable of going out to 110 meters. And at that distance, yes, its accuracy suffers a little bit, but you're still at a 13 millimeter accuracy. I could ask some of the best American football players on the planet to take a football and huck it 110 yards. Most of them are gonna have a problem doing that anyways, but even further to get it at 13 millimeter accuracy. And yes, I know 110 yards, 110 meters, meters is longer, get off of it. Americans know yards, gotta work with me on that. But they couldn't hit that kind of an accuracy. This can. Your average iPhone scanner is pretty darn accurate, but only for a very small segment of space. iPhones are great when you need to, let's say, scan a piece on your car to reproduce it. Yeah, you have to go in a blender or mesh mixer or ZBrush and clean it up a little bit, but you've got effectively the good bones that you would need to produce a proper model from the beginning. And that's what's really important about 3D scanners. They enable you to take something physical and make it digital without using calipers and a ton of your time. And yes, there are plenty of areas where utilizing calipers or tape measures or meter sticks, whatever it might be, is a better move. But 3D scanners in general make life, in most cases, quite a bit easier for the user themselves. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in those comments. 3D scanning is pretty awesome. I wanna know if you guys like it, if you wanna see more 3D scanning content. We might end up breaking out some more of our professional 3D scanning content onto a separate channel, but we will still show some of the fun adventures that we're doing with 3D scanning here. I'd love to know your thoughts on scanning random objects that Patreon chooses and releasing those files for people to use. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Now there are a few other apps here. We can also look at doing a scan itself where we're able to just quite literally walk around an object. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you're looking for something else to watch right below me will be the unboxing of these two scanners. The most expensive unboxing that we have done to date, 80,000 US dollars of equipment. Yeah. Kind of crazy what these things cost. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. I appreciate you guys for all of your support. And if you're looking to support our channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. Right next to the unboxing video of these two scanners will be a random video chosen especially for you. I will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.